PPPC slaughtered APN and AFC at local government elections, captured 61% of votes cast. 88-year-old shopkeeper murdered during suspected home invasion. New airline boss complains of burdens of doing business in Guyana. And in sport, Taj Hall takes six as Bangladesh humble West Indies in first of two tests. These and more right now in this of a Saturday, November 24th edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sani Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. The People's Progressive Party has remained strong after the local government election, capturing a whopping 61% of the votes of the electorate. Of the three major parties, the APNU scrapped 34%, while the Alliance for Change received a mere 4% of the population voting in its favor. The Guyana Elections Commission had reported that only 36% of the voting population came out and cast their ballots for the local government elections. In actual figures, 208,534 persons of 573,923 persons voted. This is 30,000 less than the 2016 elections. Following tabulations, GCOM results showed that the People's Progressive Party secured 61% of the total PR votes, while the APNU trailed with 34% and the AFC bringing in the tail with a mere 4%. The AFC, which decided to go to the polls alone, had claimed that from its own calculations, about 10% of the population voted in its favor while claiming that it is satisfied with the results. The party claimed that the APNU still needs to remain collated in order to keep the PPP from government. The PPP will be building on its strong support to try to win the 2020 general and regional elections. Court free brooms? MTV News Update. The People's Progressive Party lashed out at Prime Minister Moses Nakamoto over the government's delayed approach to debate the recently filed no confidence motion. Kipney Jordan reports. The People's Progressive Party in a release said Nakamoto should stop spouting hot air and bring on the no confidence motion for debate earliest. Nagabutu is on record saying the government is committed to debating the no-confidence motion filed against them by the opposition leader, Barra Jagdio, but is yet to set a date for the hearing in the National Assembly. The Prime Minister has said the motion will not be debated before the presentation and debate of Budget 2019, which is slated for Monday, November 26. Jagdio had wanted the motion to be debated before the budget is presented, but Nagamutu said the debate of the motion will be done sometime in December and the coalition government is ready to defeat it. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. An 88-year-old shopkeeper was on Friday afternoon found dead in his Triumph Village East Coast Demerar home. The elderly man, Dorwa, called Joe, was found with his hands bound with a hand towel and a mouth gag with a rag in his kitchen at around 16 hours. Reports are the elderly man's body was discovered with a laceration to his right side of his head by a neighbor. Joe, who lived alone, was last seen by neighbors at around 11 hours when he closed his grocery shop, which he operated at the bottom flat of his home. However, when the shop did not reopen at 15 hours, as his customary and calls went unanswered, a neighbor jumped the fence and made a gruesome discovery. The northern door to the home was found open while the upper flat of the house and the shop were ransacked. While it cannot be determined if anything was taken, robbery is suspected to be the motive of the attack. An investigation is ongoing. The government has come true on its promise and will be giving public servants a tax-free retroactive increase for 2018. This has already been gazetted. The government has promised to increase public servants' wages and salaries. And while some are contending that the increases are minuscule, the government has made them tax-free. This means that when a person collects the lump sum of cash in December, all will be taken home. The increases vary for workers who are placed in categories based on their salaries. A person who earns $100,000 or below per month will get a 7% increase. Those that earn between $100,000 and $299,000 will receive a 6.5% increase. In real form, 
someone that earns a $60,000 will get a $4,200 increase and a person earning $280,000 will get $18,200. The lowest percentage increase is 0.5%, but that is for those who collect $1 million and over every month. The increase is retroactive to January 2018. Meanwhile, Opposition Member of Parliament One Edgel has called for the minimum wage to be increased to $100,000. Court Free Brooms, MTV News Update. You're watching MTV's news update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Tyo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Ana Catarina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, now me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Chief Executive Officer of the newly formed Ghana Airways has complained of the burdens of doing business in Guyana. Dr. Colin Abrams, a returning Guyanese, says he has been discouraged thousands of times during his attempts to set up the company here. He made the remarks at a press conference hosted at his Barrack Street office one day after the airline won a court case against the state, effectively receiving the go-ahead to brand the company as Ghana Airways Corporation. Though relieved and ecstatic that he has won the case, Dr. Abrams bemoaned the challenges he endured in setting up the airline. Dr. Abrams' company, which aims to become Guyana's national air carrier, faced major setbacks after it was unregistered by the Deeds and Commercial Registry when it was found that the name is identical to another company, which is Guyana Airways 2000, the country's previous national air carrier. The unregistering of the company was done nearly two years after it was established, Dr. Abrams noted. Gan Airways intended to start its operations last month but ended up spending millions in legal fees to win its case at the Ghana's High Court. Having won the case and earned a right to use the name, the company will be submitting all the necessary documents to the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority to become licensed. This process can take up to 90 days, after which the airline can launch its inaugural flight once permission is granted. As planned, the airline will target the Havana Cuba market. So far, it has employed over 100 Guyanese and it plans on hiring more. 
The People's Progressive Party is calling on the government to take a pattern of the PPP's budget to include measures to benefit the people. The party is still contending that the four budgets of the coalition government were filled with draconian measures. The Finance Minister Winston Jordan will be reading the 2019 national budget on Monday, November 26, the fifth budget of the coalition government. While the government has presented several budgets, the opposition party is contending that they only cause the hardships on citizens. Some of the measures that not only the PPP complained about are the increase in drainage and land rental charges in Region 5, the placement of VAT on water, electricity and school items. It is against this backdrop that the PPP is asking for a budget that helps the people. But a budget that is carefully crafted with a long-term strategy to ensure the welfare of the people are protected and that they are getting benefits from the state. And that's what we're calling for. While the coalition has been bashed for a number of quote-unquote blunders in the budget, they raised the tax threshold to $60,000, reduced the income tax to 28%, while increasing it to 40% for those earning above $180,000. The government also reduced the VAT from 16 to 14%. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Seavon's Waste Management and Poor and Brothers Disposal have united behind calls to central government to take the wheel as the company is contended that City Hall is out of its theft and cannot resolve the municipality's mounting debts to the companies. This was communicated in a statement yesterday where the two companies laid out what they are owed by City Hall and even provided a payment plan. Here are the details. Sivan's Waste Management and Puran's Brother Disposal explained that they withdrew their service over an outstanding debt of $160 million. Shockingly, the companies noted that this debt accumulated from June of this year. The companies aid the decision to withdraw was made only after several futile attempts to engage the municipality on the issue of settling these outstanding amounts. According to the companies, they won their June and July arrears payment by November month end, August and September payments by December 31, and the resumption of regular payments as stipulated in their contract in February. They called on government to intervene in support of this process to ensure efficient garbage disposal. The two companies also responded to reports that City Hall would contract smaller companies to replace them. They warned of the risk to the entire city should City Hall engage persons with less capacity to collect garbage than them. In a statement earlier this week, City Hall had explained that because of the serious financial shortfall, the council was unable to honor its obligation to both contractors in a timely manner, a situation which the council regrets. Five smaller garbage contractors have since expressed willingness to work with the city council from Monday, November 26, to carry out the collection services. As such, the council was scheduled to meet with these small contractors to concretize the details of the agreement. According to the governing body in the capital city, it expends approximately $30 million monthly for the removal of waste from the Georgetown environs. This solid-based management bill, it added, accounts for 38% of the council's monthly income, which is some $89 million. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. A resident of Anna Regina is bashing the town council, claiming they are not acting in the interest of the citizens. The farmer is willing to develop a road in his area, but the council is refusing his proposal. Kipri Jordan has that report. Abraham Salem, who resides at Law 26 Anna Regina, says the staff at the town council is inefficient as they refuse to do their work as they were placed there to do. Further, Salem believes it is his duty to help his community wherever he can. So me tell them me go fix the street. When me approach the contractor to come in and do the street, the contractor tell me how much he charge and what. Me say yes, I will fix the street with that. Salem was told he needed a letter for permission to construct the street, but when he went to the town council, he was given the royal runaround for over a year. Salem explained that the town clerk has granted someone permission to live on the reserve, a reason for him not being granted permission to construct the road there. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. 
The Indian Action Committee ISC has launched its annual Christmas toy drive for the less fortunate children, which will end on Friday, December 21, 2018. The goal, according to the ISC, is to accumulate toys for at least 300 underprivileged children of all ethnicities to distribute at the organization's annual children's Christmas party scheduled for Sunday, 23 December 2018. The ISC, in partnership with Garfour's New Magdu Mega Complex, the single trading and neighbor distributors, will have one major box at each location where the persons can place donated toys. Persons desirous of making donations also can do so at the ISC office located at 1762 Railway Embankment, Cummings Lodge, East Coast Semarar, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, or you can contact the ISC on 222-5163 or 656-6999 for further details. Kipney Jordan now joins us with today's tips for healthy living. Soursop with its sweet flesh and distinctive flavor is grown commercially to make juice, candy, sorbet, and ice cream. The long prickly fruit comes from the graviola tree, an evergreen native to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. It's also known as custard apple, guanabana, and Brazilian papa. Practitioners of herbal medicine use the graviola tree leaves to treat stomach ailments, fever, parasitic infections, hypertension, and rheumatism. Here are a few health benefits of the soursop. It's a treatment for diabetes. The limit of normal sugar levels ranges from 70 mg to 120 mg. The nutrients in soursop leaves are believed to stabilize blood sugar levels in the normal range. 2. Treatment of back pain. Back pain is commonly experienced these days, particularly while exercising. Using drugs for back pain can cause side effects. Soursop leaves are an effective herbal remedy for treating back pain without any negative effect. 3. Rheumatic diseases are commonly observed in elderly people causing great pain. Soursop leaves are a natural treatment for arthritis pain. For this purpose, mashes the soursop leaves until they become smooth and apply on the areas of the body affected by pain due to arthritis and eczema regularly twice a day. And finally, healthy hair. All of us long for healthy and damage-free hair. But unfortunately, the unhealthy lifestyle coupled with exposure to harmful chemicals and environmental pollutants is responsible for several hair problems like dandruff, split ends, hair loss, premature grain, etc. So using the soursop leaves to wash your hair regularly can help ease these symptoms. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals for the best in truck spares Daff and Cummings it's a one out of value new road freedom hoop on the west side check them out today for seals alternators filters air valves pistons and rings air dryers shocks bearings and a whole lot more parts and accessories for cars and minibuses call today on 254-0890 64 new road freedom hoop on the west coast of Demerara a1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, toilet tissue. now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable. Guaranteed. Be on windows and doors. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? 
Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. Tejul Islam claimed 33 for 6 as Bangladesh trashed the West Indies by 64 runs early this morning in the first of their two this matches. Chasing a target of 204 runs in Chittagong, Windies were clutching at straws on the start and were all out for 139 on the third day, suffering their first defeat in Bangladesh in seven tests. Sunil Ambers was dismissed last after top scoring for the Windies with 43. West Indies had a disastrous start, sinking 11 for 4 before an attacking 27 off of 19 by Shimron Hetmeyer. Leg spinner Devinder Bishu bagged three wickets in the morning with 26 for 4 as Windies bowled out Bangladesh for 125 in the second innings. Shakib Al Hassan became the first Bangladeshi cricketer to claim 200 wickets in tests. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV Sport Update. Still in cricket, Australia will be hurting a fourth Women's World League 20 title, while England will be hurting its second title having won the inaugural tournament back in 2009. The finals of the first ever standalone Women's World League 20 gets underway at 20 hours today. Standing ready for the final push to setting a new standard are two of most successful sides in the women's game. Australia and England had early mover advantage, but their ability to be consistently successful at the highest level is because they challenge themselves to grow with every tournament appearance. When they face off in the final at Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua later tonight, it will be another occasion to push themselves and their closest rivals, the old enemy. Australia came into the tournament as favourites, but they will not forget that England are the ones with the 50-over World Cup trophy and the bragging rights for winning the T20I leg of the women's ashes. Primary to their batting plans will again be Alyssa Healy, who has picked up four Player of the Match awards from the four games in which she has featured fully. Lanning, though warned, there was more to the side. The service in Antigua proved to be a tough grind for teams in the semi-finals, with players describing it as spongy. It meant a score of 120 might have been a good one. A new pitch will be used for the final and it is expected to offer more for the batters. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV's Sports Update. And finally in sport, the Demar Volleyball Association earlier today kicked off their B Division male tournament which saw participation of three teams playing on the wrong robin basis at the National Gymnasium. 
the Demerara Volleyball Association hosted their B Division tournament for male volleyball players. Assistant Secretary Treasurer of the Technical Committee of the Demerara Volleyball Association, Odida Brooms, informed this newscast of the day's events, highlighting that the teams were expected to play games on a round robin basis. Brooms added that the tournament expected to see participation from nine teams, but only three were able to make it. The three teams that took to the gymnasium were Vanguard Volleyball Club, Castrol Strikers, and the Linden Glasgow Rangers. Following the games earlier today, the team will participate tomorrow for the finals at 10 hours. Chelsea Griffiths reporter for MTV Sports Update. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and Napa batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. PPBC slattered AP and UNAFC at local government elections, captured 61% of votes cast. 88-year-old shopkeeper murdered during suspected home invasion. New airline boss complains of burdens of doing business in Guyana. And in sport, Teju takes six as Bangladesh humble West Indies in first of two tests. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.